bit weird. Liverpool Street Station. If you, uh, if you look around properly, most people who come out the station, you might look across the road and go, oh, it's a police station. Is that uh, Scotland Yard? Oh, I suppose it must be, because look, there's a building that says Sir Robert Peel. And I know that that, that funny looking guy there is the founder of the Metropolitan Police Force, so therefore I deduce that this must be Scotland Yard, mate. But it's not, is it? It's actually something particularly different. It is City of London Police, not Bobby's, uh, not the police force that the world knows. The inquisitive might think, hmm, that's weird. Maybe it was a, a pub or something, and uh, maybe he used to drink there or, or something? Otherwise, I can't really understand why that would be there. That, that's curious. Well, yeah, it's like a rabbit hole as soon as you step out of the station. Because it turns out that it did used to be a pub, and, but there's no record that Robert Peel ever drank there or ever stayed there or has any affiliation with it whatsoever. There is, however, a note that says that it moved from a previous address. Number 33, Bishopsgate Street. Hmm. The entrance of a rabbit hole. Well, I guess we're going to check it out. Only one problem, really, is that 33 Bishopsgate Street doesn't seem to exist anymore. Rather, they jump numbers from the 40s to the 20s. Seemingly, Bishopsgate Street, or rather the missing addresses of Bishopsgate Street are uh, down here. Great St. Helens. We're doing a lot of building work around here. It's not all uh, new stuff though. There's a, a church here, St. Helens Bishopsgate. And uh, St. Helens Bishopgate is one of the only large churches to survive the Great Fire, so quite important. But where's this number 33? Does that, does that still exist? Oh, oh, what is that? A funny, a weird, funny little house with urns on the roof. Oh my God. And a weird blue door. Blue doors, hmm, hmm. I found it. That was easy. It used to be a um, used to be a pub. Originally, it was a lodging house. So it's a lodge, number thirty-three. With a blue door. I've seen that. I've seen any other buildings with funny blue doors? Oh, before that, this church, the worshipful tomb inside this church is a guy called Sir Alberico Gentili, known as the founder of the science of international law. So uh, international law, strange blue door. The boys in blue, the blue degrees, the blue boys with the blue door. The uh, Royal Institute of International Affairs also has um, a blue door around the back. And of course the, uh, <coughs> the Bat Cave entrance. It's quite interesting actually in uh, Mason's Yard. Well, there's a lady in blue here at the moment talking to some uh, people. But yeah, this is, the, uh, this is the Scotch Club, Scotch of St. James's private Members Club, the Director's Lodge, number 13. It's where the likes of Paul McCartney would uh, rub shoulders with the Blue Boys. Sorry, I mean the men from the Blue Lodges. Sorry, I mean the business community. The men in dark suits.
the 33rd degree World Council of Freemasonry. In a lot of ways, you could say there's no connection. A blue door in the city, a blue door in the town. Any connection? Well, the guy who's buried in that uh, church in the city, St. Helens, uh, Alberico Gentili, he was part of a fraternal group who were uh, apparently suspected of being hostile to the Roman Catholic Church, or rather the control over law from the Roman Catholic Church. That's uh, William of Orange, the Orange Order. Um, you could say he was slightly resistant against the Catholic Church, put it mildly. The horse, look at his eye, it's gone crazy. You see, William of Orange really stood for the resistance against the Catholic Church in England. Got killed by a mole, that out of focus thing there. There's a mole hill, horse is uh, scared by a mole. Threw him off his horse led to a downward spiral and led eventually to his demise. The tiniest little things, if left unchecked, can end up altering the entire fabric of what we know as society, or more importantly, who's in charge. The very continuity of the project can be risked if you don't have people checking all the tiniest minor little details what is it that secures continuity of government, continuity of state, and who is maintaining the control? It's the forming of institutions. Just in case you didn't realize, Chatham House was uh, started by Cecil Rhodes as a um, secret society, and he based it upon the structure of those fraternal groups um, at the time of the Enlightenment in this country around Elizabeth I and the military structure and military order that was created for intelligence purposes. Maintaining strategic control, maintaining their power and their position. It shouldn't come as a surprise really, and the clues are all around us, that England's core structure, although seeming democratic, is in fact based upon the fraternal structure of secret societies for military purposes born at the time of the Enlightenment. <laughs>